Come on. Nothing. What would you do? All right, let's see if we can figure out what's going on. All right. I think one of the very first things that we need to do is make sure that we've got sufficient enough voltage in here to do what we're supposed to do. Terminal to terminal, 12.74 volts, so the voltage is good. Let's make sure that we're actually making it out to the, to the wires. 12.74, okay, so now you need to get an assistant to crank the key for me. Okay, go ahead and try cranking it for me. Try it again. 12.36. Okay, and I'm going to go down the cables just to make sure I don't have a voltage loss on any of my connectors here. 12.57. Try it again. Okay, we still got nothing happening. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to verify that voltage is making me down to the starter. We got two leads down here. One's a big thick one that comes directly from the battery. So we're going to go battery negative to the positive post on the starter. And we've got 12.58. Lousy connection down here. Come on, give me, give me some connection. Okay, 12.58. Try it again. No significant voltage drop at that. Uh, let's try it again at the case just to make sure we don't have a bad ground. Nope, nothing happened in there either. Okay, let's check the signal wire. It's unplugged. That silly little tab. Click. That'll come out. There we go. So I don't know if I can pull this up far enough where you guys can see it. Alright, well, maybe, maybe not. This little white thing down here. I'm just gonna gently put the lead in the tip. We have no voltage, go ahead and try it. And we have system voltage with the key in the start position, so we do have power getting down to the starter. So I'm gonna hook that back up and we're gonna try one last trick just to see if we can verify that this is in fact actually the starter. Let's see the starter. Now do me a favor, hold the key in the start position. I think that pretty much confirms that the starter is dead. Now for the purposes of clarification as to where I tapped this part right here, that's part of the metal casting. Don't hit this because you could damage this and push it into the solenoid coil causing further damage. You just want to go to a solid object right here and just give it a good 
square tap. What we're going to do now is we're going to replace the starter and they're, this is kind of a tricky one. I have done these before, replacing the starter out of the bottom. It's a royal pain in the neck. Um, I've tried pulling out the fan shroud and coming up through this way. It's a royal pain in the neck. The easiest way to do this job is just to take the intake manifold off. So we've already picked up a starter and a new intake manifold gasket. Um, depending on what kind of gasket we have in here. We're going to take the air box out, disconnect it from the throttle body. The throttle body is going to stay on the intake manifold. All we're going to do is lift the manifold up and out of the way so that we can have easy access to the starter. So let's get this started. Lubricate the, uh, the points where the screw is going to have pressure and spin. Okay, now we're going to go and spin those loose. Now we're going to grab this, disconnect this. The idea here is we want to get as much stuff out of the way as we can that's going to interfere with our ability to extract the intake manifold. So let's get this disconnected. Top and bottom. Now let's see, doesn't want to come off on the bottom. Get back on. Well, oh, that does not want to come off. persuasion makes a big difference. Now we're just going to get this down and out of the way. Uh, yeah, so I don't have to pull things, I'm just going to pull this hose off. There, now that's up and out of the way. Let me take that opportunity to get a little look at our uh, valve body. You know, if you're going to push on this, push on it very slowly and gently because you don't want to damage the gears in here. Most places will recommend that you do not do this. But eh, it's a little bit dirty, not too bad. That could definitely use some cleaning, so maybe we'll take care of that too. But let's go ahead and start getting these bolts out of here. Grab the handy dandy not so pocket screwdriver. And what we're going to do is we're just going to disconnect fuel injector wires. In the bottom, real good. Pry it out. Make sure you don't lose the weather packs that are on the inside of these things in the process. Double check all your connections for corrosion and all of that good stuff. Now, we're going to lift this off. Get ourselves some extra room. Get this cable out. Oops, I don't want to lose that little spring clip. That out of the way. All right. And we're going to get the cam position sensor unplugged. Maybe. squeeze on that. There we go. I think 
be careful because some of this plastic does get old and does break. All right, we got that hose disconnected. Cool. That out of the way. Cool. Uh, let's see, open shot to all the bolts that we need to get at. I think so. Right, let's move this one out of the way. The other end. And this one here came off of uh, something over here. We'll figure that out later. And this one here is a coolant hose. So we're not going to disconnect that because that'll end up all over the place. Get some of this debris out of here. I don't want any of this stuff going down inside the engine. Okay, let's uh, see hipstick. No, don't need to worry about that. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bolts that hold this whole assembly in. So let's go ahead and spin all seven of those out. They're 12 millimeter. Okay, 12 millimeter. Let's get these out of here. They are 12 millimeter. One, two, three. These are short ones over here. Or at least one short one. This one's going to be a long one also. Take it off with the bracket. We'll put all of those up here. And let's see, we got these brackets right here. These are just held down by a nut. Again, just held by a nut. And then yeah, the last but not least, you got that one down there, which I'm gonna have to do with a ratchet. Now this one here does have a smaller washer than the rest of them, but it's the same length. I'll put that one over there in a separate spot. And the intake manifold is now loose. So we don't strain anything over here. I'm going to try removing the uh, throttle body connector wire. I'll just take some strain off of that again. Connect, check for corroded pins. Everything in there looks good. Okay, we have the heater hose over here, making it difficult. Let's pull the dipstick out so we don't accidentally break the top of that off. got to do is clear that stud right there and we're up and out. Maybe, I don't know if I want to try pulling that stud out or not. Looks like we're making some progress. There, it is. there we go. Now I get the intake manifold up and out of the way. Vacuum hose underneath here on the bottom is disconnected. You've got to be careful of this hose when we put it back together because if we forget this, we're going to end up with a massive vacuum leak. And we can look down inside our intake port in the process and see if anything down in there is nasty. Now this engine is not direct injection, but we can look down inside these ports and get a really good look what kind of condition things are in in here. And some carbon buildup, not bad. The valves, however, are nice and clean. The valve stems, 
They're looking a little nasty. Let's get you a close-up in there on one of those. See down in there. Anytime you got an intake manifold open like this, stuff some towels in the holes so you don't accidentally drop anything in there. You know, something could happen, you could get distracted, you could get taken away from the job. You know, things can happen. You don't want to take any chances. Anything getting in there without you knowing about it. Because the first start will be the last start. And now we've got this off. We're going to inspect the intake manifold. A lot of inspecting when you take things apart. What we want to do is take a look at this gasket. Which is still standing above its surface. This is a rubber silicone rubber gasket. Okay, this gasket right here is a silicone rubber gasket. Uh, we've already replaced this. It is still staying above the surface, so it is reusable uh, as long as it doesn't have any damage or imperfections to it. Run your finger over it, see if there's any creases or cuts or tears. As long as it's smooth. It's all evenly above the plastic surface. You can reuse this. A slight bend to it right there. This is all good. Okay. So we don't have to worry about the intake manifold gasket. It's a good idea to have one just in case you need it. This is the newer up-to-date version. The, the rubber ones will compress and harden. These are not as likely to, so these are much better quality. Now, getting to these bolts down in here would be a little tricky. Um, give yourself as much room as you can. Let me get this up and out of the way here. Hopefully it doesn't fall down on me. There we go. Okay. 14 millimeter bolts are going to be holding the starter in. Get those ready. Uh, let's see. 12 millimeter, I would imagine, on that. So power wire. Yes. Okay. Now, before we start playing around with power, let's get the negative battery terminal disconnected. That's a 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter on the negative. Get loosened up. And tuck that down out of the way where it can't snap back and make contact. Right down in there, I guess. Make sure wherever you put it, you can get it back when you're done. Now, now that we've got the battery disconnected, let's get the positive battery terminal disconnected from the, the starter. Let's see, it probably should get to a different angle, make this easier for you. Okay, we'll give you guys a straight down view on the starter. Get this out of the way. Okay, this one here, you see how your cable starting to want to move with it? Hold the cable firmly so you don't break the connector in here. And then go ahead and remove the nut. And pull your cable off. And your signal wires right here, there's a little tab in the bottom, push up on the tab, and then pull out. And then move that wiring out of your way. And then we got that bolt right there, 14 millimeter, and then there's another one down here underneath, which I'm not going to be able to get you an angle on, I don't think. But let's get that one cracked loose. That's 14 millimeter. Right. 
Okay, that one's loose. Now let's get that bottom one loosened up. Okay, now a helpful tip in trying to get to this bolt right here on the bottom. I have some four inch extensions. I think actually two or three inch extensions. Six inch extension. Now if I put the socket on the six inch extension and go underneath and onto that bolt, the head of the extension is all the way over here. I'm going to be striking my radiator hose and a plastic fitting for the uh, thermostat housing. Don't want to take a chance of damaging that. And these short ones are too short, but if we put the two short ones together and go down in there, get it on the nut, we have a little bit more room over here to work with. So that's the setup we're going to be using to get that bottom bolt out. And you lean right into the block. Okay, and go ahead and remove that bolt all the way out. I don't have a 90 degree ratchet. One of the biggest reasons that I don't have one is because of the different chargers, different battery packs. Um, I did not acquire a Craftsman that works with my C3 battery packs. But I wouldn't mind having one to get into these tight spaces. One of these days, maybe. Okay, first bolt is out. And that's anti-seize. The starter was replaced three years ago. Uh, it's got a lifetime warranty. I anti-seized the bolts so that I would make sure I wouldn't have a problem taking them out. Let's get the top one out now. short ones so I get more of a handle. All right. I'll get the socket off. And that bolt right there, also anti-seized. And you'll note that there is no difference between the bolts. Now let's go ahead and remove the starter. Which, as you can see, it didn't move, so it's probably kind of stuck in there. Yep. So we're just going to give it a tap. And it'll knock it loose. Out comes your starter. Inspect it kind of carefully. We got a little bit of rust on the gear. Gear's been meshing good. Shaft's all nice and clean. So we don't have any mechanical issues. Let's get that new starter in there. Also make sure that while you've got it apart, you check your flywheel, the gearing on there. And get down in here, inspect the teeth on your flywheel, proper engagement. They're not riding too high, they're not riding too low, they're right where they should be. Go in here, just inspect whatever you can. I'm looking at the welds of the torque converter. The torque converter has been slipping, it's been giving me some problems, and I can see a little discoloration in there, like maybe my torque converter has been getting a hair bit warm. But otherwise, a little bit of rust in there. Everything else looks clean, dry. There's no apparent leaks from the transmission seal or main seal on the engine. So go ahead, clean this material up right here. And grab yourself a Scotch Brite pad. And just because I love brake cleaner, I'm going to hit it with some of that too. It's imperative that your metal surfaces, especially where your bolts go in, are going to be good and clean because that's where your starter is going to be making its electrical connection to the ground. You don't want to have a ground problem with a brand new starter.
So this is the old starter. Now, no corrosion on the pin, no signs of any connections being burned on this, so it's most likely just an internal failure. I don't see any signs of damage. Nothing's Nothing seems to be wrong with it, other than it just doesn't work, so. Let's get the new one out. Compare it to the new one. Make sure that they are exactly the same. Make sure the orientation of your plugs and your connections are all the same. This doesn't have the, the vent in it that this one has, so we're going to transfer the vent over. And otherwise everything else looks good, so let's get that vent switched over. Well, that couldn't have been any easier. And then a light twist is apparently all it takes. The old one, back in the box. You can even hook the uh, clip back up if you want to. Just got to go back either for core or warranty replacement. And in this case, it is a warranty replacement. Uh, this did come from the auto parts store with a lifetime warranty. Take the new starter and put this one in. So now we've got the surface all cleaned up. It's nice and clean and smooth. We're going to go ahead and take the starter, put the starter in. We're going to grab the two bolts. We've already anti-seized these for, you know, from the previous application, so there's no need to do it again. But if you don't already have anti-seize on them, it would be a good idea to put some on it. We'll go ahead and get the top bolt. In and started. That comes in from the transmission side. Get that almost all the way in. Move a little bit of wiggle so you can feed the last one in. It goes in from the bottom. You'll find that being able to wiggle this around can be can be very helpful. And sometimes the bolt doesn't want to turn anyways. Maybe this one was in the top. Yeah, I think maybe that one was in the top. Try putting this one in the bottom, see if this one goes any easier. Could be just the starting threads on the bolt. Yeah, starting threads on the bolt are a little, probably a tad bit marred up. Because this side's not turning quite as easily. Bottom one started in there. Go ahead and snug those down. Click. Be 
careful you don't break your oil pressure switch. <coughs> Click. Now let's bring our wiring over. Remember it sits up behind. We'll put the uh, big red lead back on first. Let's take that nut off. Get a little connector, put your connector over. Snug that one down. Be careful with this one when you tighten it down. You've got to have it snug, but not so tight that you break the, the bake light that this is made out of. So push down on your cable to hold it still and then tighten. These are not torqued down really all that snug, so you've got to be very careful with them. You'll feel where it just starts to want to. Stretch things a little bit. Be very gentle with it. And I think right about there is probably good. There's probably a torque specification on that one I'm unfamiliar with. So if you over tighten it and break it, well, consider yourself warned and make sure your boot is all the way down and over. The other side of it as well is tricky, so make sure your boot completely covers that connect. There we go. And go ahead and don't forget your signal wire. Click. Just make sure that it did click. It doesn't pull back off, so it clicked. Now, just to play it safe, make sure that we don't have any other problems. And yes, I'm going to set codes by doing this. I don't care. I just want to make sure that the starter is going to work before I put the manifold back on. I'm going to take the negative battery terminal and just set it on there for a moment. And then give it a quick kick with the starter. All right, that confirms to me that the starter works. Now we can go ahead and put the intake manifold back down. Okay, let's bring this intake manifold down into position. And remember, you got this hose right here. an eye on that so you don't forget it. There you get all your wiring up and out of the way. Okay, it's about where it needs to be. Make sure your wires and plugs and clips and all of that are not where they're going to get pinched or stuck. Okay, we're all in place. Now let's get all of these towels pulled out. Could have pulled them out before, but just wanted to make sure everything was in place and fit properly first. A screwdriver gravity. Right, let's make sure that all of this is where it's supposed to be. And cl again, clean. We use a little bit of brake clean. Clean up those surfaces actually too. Spray some brake clean on the on the cloth. And get in here and just wipe all that is down.
And if you're using these blue towels, just be careful. They do disintegrate from brake cleaner. anything is they'll go right through the engine and get burned and tossed right out of there but I'm gonna do the same thing in the uh, gasket surface we have a new rag for that one Fuzzies left in there. All right. Everything's all nice and clean now. Let's go ahead and put this right on. careful of your gasket. We'll check your gasket. Everything's in place. Nothing sticking out. Okay, we're good to go. Let's get this hose right here connected. Because once this is on, this is a very difficult hose to get at. Under the hose of your heater. That's going to make it tricky. A little persuasion. A little persuasion, it's all the way on. Now we can go ahead and guide this all the rest of the way back in. Start putting on the nuts, bolts, and fasteners. Remember this one here. Long bolt goes in the top, short bolt goes in the bottom. The short bolt here, the bolt with the short washer, and it goes down in the bottom. fittings that hold your wiring in place. Same thing with the other one. Put that in place, put the nut down on it. Top bolts right there, and one right there. I'll go ahead and run all of those all the way down in. Twelve millimeter. Just finger tight. I said pretty loose still.
at least a little one down at the bottom. Now once you've got all your bolts down, fingers snug, give it a little tuggy tuggy here and there, make sure everything's seated, and go ahead and tighten everything down to spec. Tighten everything up snug and then come back for the final tightening. That way, there, there's no chance of something being in the way. And tightening up a bolt and then crushing something or breaking something because you had a wire or something caught in the way. Always double check everything before you snug everything down tight. And then do it gradually in steps just to keep everything happy. It's not like we're gonna warp a gasket or something doing this, but get down here and get this one all good and snugged up. Click. And then tighten up all the rest of them. These don't have to be super tight. There is a rubber gasket underneath there. These are just tight enough to not loosen up or come back out. We don't want to tighten them up and strip anything. We don't want to break anything. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all tightened up. Let's go ahead and put the wiring down. Just pull back and guide it down to the tabs. Make sure you are all in the right places before you push them all in, just in case you have to reroute something. Alright, everything looks good. Don't forget this one right down here underneath. Click. Toes in the back is hooked up, good. Double check your heater hoses, make sure nothing in here is kinked. Like this one here, it's wrapped right around itself. sure how I did that. Somehow I managed to get this one twisted right around itself. Hmm. And how in the world did I manage that? Nope. Well, looks like we're just gonna have to untwist. Now make sure things like this hose are routed the right way. I had it underneath. So I just pulled that back out, turned it around, got it back up on the top where it's supposed to be so it's not getting twisted or kinked. Now I'll go ahead and get this clamp back in the right position. got two hoses up here to hook up and they go with the uh, air cleaner. One. Put the dip dipstick back in. Put this hose back up over where it's supposed to be. Get this hose down here in the bottom for your EVAP. Get a little 
indents and detents and stuff like that all over the place here to make sure everything is lined up properly at the right angles. That's all stuff you want to make sure that everything's fitting exactly as it should be. Go ahead and get your fuel injector clean connectors back down. Check everything, push your wiring loom back into place. Oh, I missed that one. It's down, on, locked. Get the uh, connectors for the throttle body hooked up, which you should have done before putting the hose back in place, but it's okay, click, that's back in place, double check everything, good, let's get the rest of that connector, harness all fastened down, that's good, that's in place, that's locked, 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 good, everything over here is good, Alright, get the breather hose hooked up. That one's on. And then we got this one big one right here. And so route it over here. Now that one goes underneath this. Double check everything again. All plugged in, nothing's disconnected. Let's get this. It belongs. That's all tight, that's good. You're all set. Alright, go ahead and start it and confirm that everything is as it should be. And 10 millimeter wrench. Get the post on the battery tightened down. The clamp is all the way down on the post as far as you can get it and then tighten it in that position. Again, this is not an all go gorilla on. Nice and easy with this. As soon as you feel the nut snug up, you're pretty much all set. And it won't move. You're good. Go ahead and start it up. Get all of the stuff out of here.
you guys a straight down view on the starter. Let's try that again. Okay, we'll give you guys a straight down view on the starter.